once upon a time, tucked away in a vine-covered cottage in the woods, there was a rabbit witch who possessed great and wonderful magic. Her name was Musetta. Humans and animals alike stopped at her little cottage to acquire all sorts of things. One of Musetta's tonics could revive a wilted garden into a lush paradise. Another could turn even the most tone-deaf singer into an accomplished prima donna with a voice like honey. She even had a potion that could give super strength to the smallest of creatures. Musetta loved having company and delighted in offering her customers homemade dandelion tea and carrot cake. However, there always came a point where they had to leave and Musetta found herself all alone. In fact, Musetta spent so much time alone that she began to feel lonely. Sometimes days went by without Musetta receiving a single visitor. Or so she thought. Glancing out her window, Musetta began to notice rain or shine, sleet or snow, Monday through Saturday, despite living deep within the woods, a frog mailman would dutifully stop by her cottage and deliver the mail. One day, as Musetta saw the frog mailman turning a corner and hop, hop, hopping to her mailbox, she realized, if I got to know the mailman, I could have a friend who comes by almost every day. But just as quickly as Musetta had this thought, she realized that the frog mailman was getting ready to hop away. Musetta raced out of the house. Wait, wait, she cried and blurted to the startled frog mailman. My name is Musetta. Would you like to come in for dandelion tea and carrot cake? The frog mailman smiled and said, I would love to. My name's Fibian. Nice to meet you. And so that afternoon, they had a lovely chat. They clicked instantly. Soon enough, they were having tea together every day, Monday through Saturday, when Fibian stopped by on his route. Musetta told him stories about her customers and that healing potions were her favorite to make. In return, Fibian told Musetta that he loved a challenge and had chosen the route with her home because it was so far away from the village and was one of the more difficult stops. That, and he confessed, Fibian was curious about Musetta herself. He was familiar with witches, but had never heard of a rabbit one before. He thought she was mysterious. This delighted Musetta. She had never thought of herself as mysterious before. Eventually, they became close friends. Musetta could feel her loneliness melting away entirely. She loved having someone to expect. She even began making Fibian's favorites, fly tea and mosquito pie, for his visits. One day, as they were eating, Fibian asked Musetta, Can I tell you a secret? Musetta's heart beat fast. She had never heard anyone's secrets before. She nodded, excited. Fibian grinned and said to her, You know what I did before I was a mailman? Musetta shook her head. He was so passionate about his work, she couldn't picture him doing anything else. Well, said Fibian, I used to be a human prince. Really? Musetta exclaimed in wonder. She had seen human princes before. They were so handsome and regal and had so much money. They seemed to have such charmed lives without any worries. Fibian nodded. Oh, yes, I was once Prince Fibian. Can you believe it? He laughed. Musetta, however, frowned as something occurred to her. She was afraid to ask, but she had to know. Did a witch turn you into a frog? Sure did, Fibian said. One moment I'm learning sword fighting, and the next I'm tiny and green. What a life! I suppose something like that must make you dislike witches then, Musetta sighed. Not at all, Fibian replied simply. I don't hold it against her. Things happen. 
But you don't miss being a prince? Musetta asked incredulously. Fibian shook his head. Not really. Being a prince is, well, let's just say I prefer being a frog and a mailman. Musetta was stunned. Surely he didn't mean it. Being transformed and giving up a life like that must have been devastating. Musetta was so bothered that she didn't get a wink of sleep that night. I must do something for Fibian, she said. I must change him back. Musetta sprung out of bed and raced to her kitchen. She poured through each and every one of her spell books, took all the ingredients out from her cabinet, laid them on the table, and got to work on the most ambitious potion she had ever attempted in her career as a witch. Oddly enough, while there were plenty of spells on how to turn princes into frogs, she couldn't find anything on how to turn frogs back into princes. Well, she found true love's kiss in a number of her spell books, but finding Phibian's true love seemed too time-consuming. No, Musetta decided. It was much better to take matters into her own paws. So she worked diligently through the night. It took a lot of trial and error, but by morning, Musetta was convinced she had done it. That afternoon, when Fibian stopped by her cottage while on his mail route, Musetta was very sleep-deprived. Are you feeling okay? Fibian asked, concerned. Musetta sprinkled the potion into his fly tea, and she replied, Never better. And as tired as she was, Musetta meant it. Sure, Fibian had said he preferred being a frog, but that must be because he had forgotten how wonderful being a prince really was. Musetta was convinced that he would be elated to go back to his former self and his former life. However, when she had offered Fibian the tea, he said he was in a hurry that day. Musetta hastily gave him a cup to go. As she bid him farewell, she was disappointed she could not yet see the fruits of her labor, but she was excited for how happy he would be when he visited her the next day. But Fibian did not come the next day, nor the next day, nor the next. Loneliness began to creep back into Musetta's heart. Musetta began to worry about her friend so much that she decided she had to do something that scared her. She had to leave her cottage and venture into town. Maybe someone there knew where Fibian had gone. Once Musetta arrived, she saw a crowd had gathered to watch a grand parade that was underway. Musetta, curious to see what all the fuss was about, got on her tiptoes to try and see over the crowd. But she still couldn't see, so she hopped to get a better view. That's when she saw him, Prince Fibian, a handsome human, being carried by servants into town. Musetta hopped again, hoping to get a better look. This time, however, she realized that he didn't look happy at all. Instead, he looked sad. Troubled, Musetta followed the procession until the end. Prince Fibian dismissed the servants and sighed, finally happy to have a moment alone. Then he heard a familiar voice whisper, Fibian! Fibian! Prince Fibian turned around and beamed when he saw Musetta. But this was just a brief moment of happiness. His face darkened, and he said, Something terrible has happened. I've been transformed back into a prince. Well, that doesn't sound terrible to me. Don't princes live a good life? Prince Fibian sighed. <sighs> in some ways, but not in others. When I was a prince... I was lonely. How can that be? Musetta asked. Surely you had lots of people around. Well, yes, but when they saw me, they only saw a prince. They didn't see who I was. When I was a frog, I got to be my own man, my own mailman. And I got to connect to all sorts of interesting animals, like you. But now, being as I am, I won't get to do that anymore. Musetta felt her heart sink. I hadn't realized. I never meant for you to be unhappy. Don't be sorry, Prince Fibian said. It's not like this is your fault. 
This is how it always goes in the stories. I guess I was going to go back to being a prince eventually, and now I must be going. Where? Musetta asked. Back to the castle. That's where I belong now. Goodbye, Musetta. I wish I could have spent a little more time with you. And with that, Prince Fibian smiled sadly, waved, and stepped into the carriage and took off. If only I had listened to what Fibian wanted, Musetta sighed. I can't leave things like this. I need to make them right. And so Musetta raced back to her cottage to work on a potion to set things right again. Thankfully, it is much easier to turn princes into frogs. Before too long, Musetta had baked the cure into a mosquito pie. She wrapped up a slice and made her way to the castle. The journey was long and treacherous for a small rabbit, but being a witch, Musetta handled herself just fine. Eventually, she made it to the castle and sneaked her way into Prince Fibian's royal bedchamber. Prince Fibian sat up in bed, startled. Musetta, what are you doing here? I was the one that turned you into a prince, Musetta confessed. I'm really, really sorry. I thought I was helping, and I should have believed you when you said you were happy. But I can fix this if you'll let me. Musetta unwrapped the piece of mosquito pie and handed it to Prince Fibian. Oh, Musetta. Prince Fibian smiled. You know I can't resist a piece of your homemade mosquito pie. With that, Prince Fibian took a bite. Suddenly, he began to transform, and the handsome prince was once again a frog mailman who simply went by Fibian. Man, it feels good to be myself again. What are we waiting for? He said. Let's hop to it. Without a second thought, Musetta and Fibian hopped out of the castle. Thank you, Musetta, Fibian said. Musetta's brows furrowed in confusion. For what? This was all my fault. But you were honest, you apologized, and you did the right thing in the end. Now let's go home, Fibian yawned. I need to catch up on delivering the mail. Together they took off into the night. The frog mailman and the rabbit witch best friends who were lonely no more. The end.